Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior Design Evangelist here at Adobe, and I hope you're all doing well on this Thursday morning, afternoon, or evening. If you are tuning in live here on Behance, let me know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. We've got Patrick and Umicorn, Marsha, Penny, Oliver, Zanel, Seda, Robert, uh, don't want to mispronounce your name, so I do apologize. Uh, Paulo and CJ, great to see all of you. Um, I'd love to pronounce uh, this person's name, but I may spell it out phonetically. So, uh, G Jayo Chirima. No, I probably butchered that. I'm sorry. Um, all right, great to see all of you. Hope you're well. And today we're going to be diving more into Adobe Firefly. If you missed the news, I think it was last week. I think it was last week, uh, we came out of beta. So you can now use Firefly for commercial use, which is wonderful. And we have Firefly on the web. We have it in Illustrator and Photoshop and Adobe Express. And who knows where else we're going to see it. All right, let me go ahead and hop over to my screen and apologize if my camera is a little bit laggy today. I was having some weird issues right before the stream. So we'll see. I'm going to try to fix it afterwards. All right. So firefly.adobe.com head over there and play around with it a lot of fun you can do a lot of cool things text to image generative fill text effects gener uh, generative recolor and of course we have a lot in the works that we are exploring things like text to image 3d to image we have personalized results text to vector we're exploring text to pattern all sorts of fun things and we, of course, would love your feedback on what you'd like to see. Do you want to see it in video tools, 3D tools, all sorts of things? Just, you know, let us know. So I figure today, since we're almost in October, it's almost spooky season, we're going to design some generative assets for Halloween. I'm going to be exploring text to image and generative fill, all sorts of fun things. And I would love your suggestions as well. If there are certain things that you'd like to see when it comes to Halloween assets. Let me know in the chat. Marsha is asking, can I use my old Firefly images from before when it was in beta? So I, I believe the answer is no. So if you've generated things prior to last week, you cannot use those commercially because you know the model was still in flux and you know there were lots of things going on behind the scenes. Um, so it's going forward from, I think it was last Tuesday possibly, I forget the exact date. But whenever we remove the watermark, that's when you can start using things commercially. All right, so let's start off with some text to image. And some of you may have seen this last week. You may have seen it in uh, various live streams as well, but this allows you to type in a prompt and get an image, right? It's kind of cool. But what's kind of nice about this, and it's, it's kind of fun, it becomes a challenge, is really figuring out the right prompts to guide your output. So if I go ahead and down here, of course I can browse all these images. Some of them are incredibly cute, like this Scottish terrier fern, and, um, you know, all sorts of interesting results, whatever this is. I, th should, I think I showed this off last week, this little creature eating a banana. I don't know, right? So I can start typing in something like pumpkin, right? And we're going to get, it's telling me the prompt is too short, but we're going to get something. And the, by default, what we're going to see is an artistic representation of a pumpkin. And you know, these are, these are fine, right? Now I should point out that this is still based on our original model of Firefly. We're working very actively on the next generation model, which hopefully we'll see soon. Uh, so obviously results will improve over time. But what I love is the ability to really hone in on your results. So over here to the right, we can start off by changing the aspect ratio if we wanted to. So if we wanted something, maybe landscape, which is four by three, we can do that. You can uh, change it to square or widescreen. And then you can start experimenting with the different content types. So if you don't want an artistic output, you can change it to photo. And then you also have some styles and color and tone and lighting and composition down below. But we're also going to experiment with the actual prompt itself to really dial that in. So I'm gonna go ahead, now that I've changed it to landscape and photo, let's go ahead and regenerate this. And I'm still not expecting something spectacular because the prompt is simply pumpkin, right? So it, there's really nothing there. It's fine, right? It's a pumpkin beside some apples and it, 
it really likes apples for some reason. I don't know why all of these have apples in them. I should ask the team what's going on here. But down at the bottom, we can start you know, really dialing this in. And I found something, you know, adding something like um, editorial photo of a, and then you use the subject, right? And that's gonna start to push it in a more photorealistic look. And it might even add some scenery, right? Put the pumpkin on a cloth or a table or whatever it might be. But you really wanna start to describe the rest of the scene. So on a rustic table, for example. And that's, you know, just by adding on a rustic table, it's going to start really defining the rest of the scene. So the background might change and the lighting might change, right? So now we're starting to get there. Um, and if we wanted to, let's say a rustic environment, maybe we want it to be candle lit because it's kind of spooky, right? Candle lit, something like that. And now we're gonna really start to get to where we want. Checking out the chat for some questions while we are, there we go, right? So we're, we're kind of moving in that direction. Now, the thing is, this is very fall-like, but it still doesn't feel like Halloween. So there are two things we can do. We can either change the word pumpkin to something like jack-o'-lantern, jack or we can try adding something at the end of it to further define this. So if we do something like spooky scene in the background, right? Just by adding in spooky, that may tell Firefly that we want something more Halloween themed and we might get, there we go. We're gonna get a jack-o'-lantern. And this is looking pretty good. It looks like a rough jack-o'-lantern that you may have carved at home. So we're, we're kind of moving in that direction that we're looking for. And we can also change this to a photo of a, uh, you know, instead of pumpkin, we can do jack. Oh, lantern. Hopefully I spelled things right. I never spell things right during my live streams. But while this is going, uh, if anyone's gonna be at Adobe Max in just a few weeks, let me know in the chat. I'd love to say hi. Uh, right, so we're getting there. We're kind of moving in that direction. But from here, once you've kind of gotten something decent, what you're able to do is you hover over the photo. Not only can you share and download this photo now, of course, now without watermarks if you're on a paid plan, but you can also edit it, right? So we can do generative fill, which we might do in a second, but we can also do something like show similar. So if you really like this photo and you wanna see photos that are similar, you can go ahead and do that. It's gonna regenerate, possibly. Um, it's gonna regenerate three additional ones. Marsha says, I wish I was going to Adobe Max. Maybe one day, Marsha, maybe one day. All right, so we have our, you know, three more that are kind of in that direction, which is really nice. So this one's kind of cute, right? And we can also use, use we can also use the option use as reference image. Now, what exactly does this mean? So we got this little pop-up here. It says reference image will be used to influence future generations. And this allows you to combine your original image with a new prompt. So if you want to change it to something like maybe a haunted house in the background, something like this, right? Now, if I were to simply press generate, which I'm going to do, we may not see much change. And that's because the reference image slider right down here at the bottom is kind of in the middle. So it's not pushing towards the new prompt that I just typed in, right? You're seeing maybe a little bit of a haunted house back here, sort of. But now if I move this over to prompt, what we're going to happen, we're going to see, start to see the original image kind of shift away from that original image and more towards the new prompt. Now, because I only changed the last part to haunted house in the background, it may get us to where we're looking for because we're kind of focusing more. There we go, right? We're focusing more on the prompt and less on the original image. So you got to kind of find that balance to get exactly what you're looking for. But I think you know, this one over here looks kind of nice. It's got this fun, artistic haunted house in the background. I'm kind of digging it. And then from here, like I mentioned, you can either download or share this photo, or if you wanted to change one or two things that's part of this image, you can jump in straight into generative fill. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna dive into generative fill, and this will allow us to either add additional objects or remove objects. So. Let's say, for example, we wanted to, and I don't know how well this is going to work, but we're going to try it. Maybe remove this pumpkin, even though it's incredibly cute. We might want to remove this pumpkin over here to the right. So I'm going to choose remove. 
And we're simply going to, let me decrease this. Whoops. Oh no, I broke it. I tried, oh, there we go. Okay, I tried to decrease the size of the brush, but I pressed a different key. Um, if I go ahead and brush over top of this pumpkin, and I'm also gonna brush over this light cast over here to the right. And then we're gonna press generate, because if you wanna remove something, all you have to do is just press generate and let Firefly do its thing. Sean says, I got great news about Max this morning. Ooh, are you gonna be there, Sean? That would be fun. Cool, all right, uh, there, there we go. The pumpkin is now gone, right? Which is wonderful. We can also use this to add objects. So if we go ahead and maybe we'll, oh, I gotta go ahead and press keep. Maybe we want a candle. So I'm just gonna brush over here and simply type a candle. Now this prompt is very short, but it should still kind of get us hopefully a decent looking candle that matches the rest of the scene. And it does. And of course, I, if I wanted a candle inside of a, a little candle holder or you know another pumpkin or something like that, I can certainly describe that. But using generative fill to make very small tweaks to your um, image is decent. And you can also use it to retouch too. So this right here is looking, I mean, it kind of looks like eyebrows, right? If I zoom in, I think I can zoom in. Nope. I know there's a way to zoom in. My thing isn't working. There we go. All right, so it kind of looks like eyebrows, which I, I don't hate, but I can go ahead and very easily, you know, brush over top of these weird carvings and press remove. And in a few seconds, Firefly will return three different results that I can cycle between, right? That one looks pretty good. And I can go ahead and keep it. And now we have our final image. So from here, what we're able to do is we can download this or we can share a link, but I'm going to go ahead and download this. And it's going to download to my computer uh, without the watermark. I can now use it for commercial use. Or what I can do is I can drag it directly into Photoshop to continue editing if I wanted to. So if I wanted to use that as part of a composition or if I wanted to extend it, because at the moment, extend generative generative expand is not available on the web, hopefully one day but it is available in Photoshop. So I have this image here in Photoshop. We're gonna hop back to the web in just a moment. But if I go ahead and press the C key on my keyboard to grab my crop tool, I can now, maybe I just want it a little bit extended on this side to fi finish the haunted house. And then maybe a little bit more on this side to finish up this pumpkin and maybe a little bit more of the table. Now at the top, we can choose transparent, generative expand or content aware fill. But I'm going to go ahead and press Generative Expand and Generate. So Carmen is asking, started late, silly question. Every time you make a change, will it use a credit? So I believe the answer is yes for that. Depending on the plan that you have, you get a certain amount. Of, credits are a little bit confusing, but you get a certain amount of credits per month, depending on the plan that you have. Something like the All Apps plan, you have a thousand credits. Now, what exactly does that mean? Again, it's confusing. Um, there is a page that describes it all, but the important thing to note is that even if you used all of your credits and you're on a paid plan, we don't stop you from generating images. It just may become slower depending if there's a lot of traffic, a lot of people generating at the same time. So, you know, if I've used a thousand and then I'm on my 1001 generation, it's not gonna say you cannot generate anymore. It'll just become a little bit slower. So you can still continue to go, uh, you know, generate images. All right, so I extended the image and we have a few different options. That one looks pretty good right there. The stem is a little bit wonky, but I can certainly dive in and fix it. But I was able to just drag it into Photoshop, do some generative fill and continue my work. Now, before we continue in Photoshop, I do wanna hop back over to Chrome for a second. And I wanna show you generative recolor. And this is really cool because this all works with vectors. And you know, many of you are illustrators, you might be working on a project and you've spent a ton of time creating exactly what you want, all the paths and whatever you do in Illustrator, right? But you want to recolor it, see what it might look like in a different style. And there are two ways you can do this. You can do this in the web using an SVG, or you can do it directly in Illustrator. I wanna show you both of those options. So if I hop over to Finder, I do have here, a few different SVGs. So we have this one here and we have this one and then we have an illustrated file, which I'll show you in just a moment. But I can grab this SVG and boop, 
pop it directly in, and I, I can start describing a different feel that I want for this particular vector. So we'll keep it simple. We'll just do something like retro. And what's really nice about this is it keeps your vector intact. So the output will be an SVG and you'll be able to continue your work in Illustrator or whatever vector graphic application you use, right? So we have some fun, this, you know, this one's green. A lot of these kind of have a green tint to them. So maybe I might want an orange, maybe an orange and brown highlights. And you can also choose very similar to text to image. We have some presets and some styling options over here to the right. But I mean, this looks pretty good, right? I kind of like this one. It's got this very desaturated feel to it with some orange and some browns. Again, if you take a look at the original, right? Here's the original. It's great, it's beautiful, but you might want to see what else it can do. And, and the last thing you wanna do is after spending so many hours working on this particular design, you don't wanna to have to go in and manually recolor every single element, right? So using something like generative recolor will allow you to very quickly see what it could look like in a variety of themes. And just to kind of show you, let's try out, mm, why not? Trippy disco lights, always fun with these different um, presets. Recolor is also in color. Is it really, Sean? I did not know that. Well, there you, ooh, look at these, these are fancy. That one's kind of cool. It's got some pink over here and some yellow and a little bit of orange and blue. I love that one. Um, so you can go ahead and download this or then you can hop over to Illustrator. I'm losing my voice. Um, and then you can continue your work. But you also have generative recolor directly in Illustrator now. So we have this very complex, as you can see, as I'm hovering over all the different shapes and paths, it's a very complex design. Um, but if I go ahead and select all of it, and then right down here at the bottom, we have recolor, right? Which will take us into our normal recolor, I believe. But it's also going to prompt us to go into generative recolor. If you open it for the first time, it's gonna say, hey, we have generative recolor available. You can do that. So I'm gonna hop in there. Very similar to what you saw on the web, right? So if you wanted something more of a retro, or maybe, you know, this one is was designed very dark and pink. Let's try Halloween. We're gonna keep the prompt, prompt very simple. I'm expecting something a little bit more orange and red and brown possibly. And again, it's preserving your vectors, right? Look at that. And these are really cool. I think I like that first one a lot, right? And again, if I dive in here, all the paths and all the everythings are preserved, which is amazing. So you can have, you can you know, duplicate this onto another artboard and kind of see all the different options side by side. But the fact that you're able to just dive in here, recolor the entire thing. Let's do one more just because this is a lot of fun. Let's do something, let's try the trippy disco one. It may not work that well because it's so dark to begin with, but I'm curious, will it brighten it up? I don't know. I wonder if we can kind of push it in that direction by um, adding some prompts in there. I mean, that's not bad, right? Kind of. Uh, let's say Trippy uh, Disco, maybe Bright Lights. I don't know if that'll help at all, but we're gonna try. I love experimenting on these streams because there's a lot that I haven't kind of done yet with some of these tools and people are always finding new ways to use them. I mean, kind of, it kind of brightened it up just a little bit but definitely experiment, right? There's some more sample prompts. This one looks like it could be a little bit brighter. So we'll try that before we move on. I wanna dive into Photoshop one more time uh, just to show you a few extra things, but you get the idea, right? You can very easily dive in here, recolor your work because no one wants to spend that much time manually recoloring, especially in a uh, you know project like this where everything is so, there's just a million layers, right? This makes it easy. And that's really the point of a lot of these AI tools that we're building is to kind of remove that those mundane tasks that you would be typically doing and make the process much easier. All right, let's go ahead and hop into Photoshop for the last five minutes or so. Where did Photoshop go? Here it is. All right, so we did work on this a little bit, but we also might be working on you know, maybe a photo composition like this. And then this one in particular is a flattened image, but you might have a photo composition with many, many layers. and 
You know, we also have generative fill and generative expand directly in Photoshop. We did see a little bit about expand earlier, but generative fill, what we're able to do is we're able to remove and we're able to add objects. So in terms of removing, very simple. What we can do, we can grab something like the object selection tool and right here at the top, it's detecting all the objects. So if I wanted, let's say this pumpkin to be removed for whatever reason, I can very easily go ahead and click on it. Now, what I usually like to do is expand the selection a little bit. So by clicking on this icon on the contextual taskbar, I can expand it. And of course it depends on the size of your image. Let me actually check what the size of this image is. So right now it's, you know, the resolution is 300. I'm gonna bump that down to 72 because we definitely don't need 300. And let me select this object one more time. And then I'm gonna expand it by let's say 10 pixels or so. And then all we have to do is generative fill and then press generate. And it's gonna go through the process of removing that object. Of course, you don't have to use generative fill. If you have a very simple object you wanna remove, you can do content to wear fill. Well, what likely happened there, it's kind of fun when, you know, errors happen, is there was likely part of the pumpkin that was left over. And it could be that Photoshop was looking at the highlight at the bottom and determining that that was part of the object. So it thought possibly that I wanted to replace the object. So in this case, let's go ahead and grab the lasso tool. And we're going to also select this area down here. And let's see if that gives us a better result. Um, Cause what's interesting about Firefly and generative fill is it understands the image, understands all the objects around it. And that's a lot better, right? So I'm pretty sure that's exactly what was happening. It was looking at this down here that I did not select, right? And it was thinking in its AI ways that, well, I didn't select this. So I likely want to replace the pumpkin with something that kind of matches this. It's interesting finding these weird nuances of AI. It's very strange. But anyways, I went ahead and removed it. But what if I wanted to add something now? So right back here, we might want to add another tombstone. So I'll go ahead and do that. Type in tombstone and go. And what's kind of cool is it's going to look around the image and it's not going to just simply copy and paste the tombstone from over here to here, but it's going to try to generate something brand new that kind of matches the style of the rest of the image. And this one's not too bad. And if I want to go ahead and you know regenerate and get a few more, I can certainly do that. And in just a few seconds, we should see another three tombstones that we can cycle between. That one's pretty good. That one's not bad either. I'm gonna go with this one. And if, it, if at any point you get a result that just doesn't look that great, you can always, right here in the properties inspector, you can rate it good, poor, or you can even report it if it's something that just should not be there, right? Now, what if you wanted, we have some you know smoke in the background, but what if you wanted a lot more smoke? Maybe you want like some wisps kind of going all over the place. This is kind of interesting. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select the entire document. So command or control A. So I have a selection around the whole thing. And now all I want to do is in generative fill, type out something like, let's try something simple, smoke texture. And if all goes well, what we should get is we should get, you know, a little bit of smoke, but on a more solid background, something, you know, black or brown or maybe a dark green, something like that. If it is trying to kind of match, trying to match the image, right? And there we go. So we have some really cool smoke textures. This one is, you know, black smoke on white, but we probably want something like this. And then we can experiment with our blend modes, right? So something like this, we probably want to go screen or maybe uh, soft light, something like that. But screen looks pretty good. I think the color dodge and linear dodge are probably a little bit too much, but screen looks decent and we can drop the opacity. And now we have some smoke. Now, if you wanted it only on the bottom half of the image, you can just do something like this, right? And then, Wispy smoke. Let's try leaving texture out and see if that gives us different results. It's always fun trying to figure out what's going on in the brain of the AI behind the scenes. I have no idea. And we are given, ooh, ooh, here we go. Now we're talking, right? So now you can experiment again with the different blend modes, do something like that, maybe drop the opacity. 
Maybe select the layer mask that comes with it and use something like a gradient from maybe white to black, or no, black to white, and then just drop that down a little bit. And now we have some nice smoke that we added into the foreground of this particular photo composition. A lot of fun things you can do with Firefly and Generative Fill once you start getting the hang of it and experimenting with different prompts. So that's gonna wrap things up for me for today. Half an hour goes by very quickly. But a big thank you to everyone who has tuned in today. Uh, stick around, we've got more content coming up in just a few moments and I will see you all next time. Thanks everyone.